Thanks so much for clicking on this video, guys. But before we begin, can you give me 15 seconds to thank the sponsor for today's episode, Swag Bugs? Fantastic. Let's go. If you'd like a great new way to earn extra cash and gift cards for things like your Steam wallet, then please go to the top of the description right now and click there to start earning more money today. By doing things like taking surveys, watching videos, playing games, and even shopping online, you can earn extra rewards. And yes, I've used the service before, and it is really legit and very useful. Also, if you sign up in the description today, you get an extra $5 sign-up bonus. So thanks again, Swag Bugs, and please enjoy the video. <sighs> You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard. Oh my god, yes! I've been waiting for someone to tell me that for years! Harry Potter's cool! I can't wait to do wizard stuff! And even if I'm not that good at magic, I want to at least be surrounded by it. <laughs> I wonder if there's a good game out there that can truly capture the magical world of Harry Potter. Maybe one on my phone. Let's see. <laughs> Avada Kabarba Streisand. And this is why I'm a retro gamer at heart. Now I wonder if there was a PS1 game made about Harry Potter. I'm not sure if there was though. Yes, there was, Harry. I'm a what? I'm, I mean, sorry, what? Yes, Harry. It's about the Sorcerer's Stone. You mean the Philosopher's Stone? The Sorcerer's Stone. Philosopher. Sorcerer. Okay, I don't care. Let's make it easier for everybody. I'm going to be playing today Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on PS1. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Kenakura Show. Where I always have to do the duty to deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And yes, today, if you couldn't tell, we're playing Harry Potter on PS1. And I really like Harry Potter, I'm a fan of the series, so how have I never played this game before? <laughs> I played the shit out of Chamber of Secrets on PS2 back in the day. That game was genuinely fantastic, and I think most of the books and movies for Harry Potter are pretty fantastic too. I mean, I've actually only read the first book and half of the second, but... Shut up! The series deals with the themes of growing up, friendships, family, responsibility, fate and courage in a very mature way while being accessible to people from a very young age, and it's got some awesome magic shit in it! Fantastic Beasts is pretty good too, excited for the new movie. The first movie had a horny rhino in it. So overall, I very much do like Harry Potter, at least enough to the point of me owning the entire box set of the movies in 4K, and I also have this um, incredibly cool official replica of Snape's wand, because, I mean, how can you blame me? I wish that Snape was my dad. And I even have these brilliant little lenticular cards from Chocolate Frogs that were for sale in the UK over 15 years ago. I have no idea how rare or valuable they are now, but I do find them too cool to sell them, so I guess that doesn't mean fucking anything anyway. Go away and leave me alone with my card of Professor McGonagall. As far as other Harry Potter games go, though, I I loved Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban was playable, and the last one that I played before I stopped entirely was Goblet of Fire on DS. Don't play that. And I've seen enough of the most recent games about the most recent movies to know that they aren't worth buying to even throw on a fire. So jumping all the way back to 2001 on the PS1 with Harry Potter and the Philosophers, Stone left me with no idea what to expect. And even after playing it, I honestly still don't know what to make of my experience with it. This is easily one of the weirdest and unintentionally funniest PS1 games I've played for years, and I find it even stranger than the USA changing the title of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone to the Sorcerer's Stone. Did publishers honestly think that Americans wouldn't know what a philosopher was? That's racist! But the Philosopher's Stone on PS1, wow, what a fucking trip this was. I loved playing the game despite how iffy it was. I only managed to get through about an hour and a half of the game itself because it isn't that good to actually play in all honesty, but it's not the worst game I've ever played, it's just extremely mediocre. It's a poor man Zelda clone, it's got all the platforming where you push forward over gaps to jump them, you have the first person aiming puzzles with switches and stuff you have to break but you have magic instead of arrows, and you even have button pressing mini games reminiscent of playing the ocarina to learn new spells. This stuff is all well and good and it could have been just a decent Zelda clone with a Potter theme but the rest is a bit of a train wreck. The game controls like total shit, without any ability to walk gently it's insanely sensitive around any kind of tight platforming task. The reason I said earlier I love this game though is because of the weirdness. It's one of the most jarring, sudden, unatmospheric, ungraceful and overly fast paced games I've ever played and combining that with some of the worst PS1 models you will ever see just makes you think you're in the middle of a fever dream. Did this game even happen? I'm not even fucking sure. So I don't think that talking about the game itself in depth does it any justice whatsoever. So I'm going to do something today in this video that I haven't done since LSD Dream Emulator. I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the 90 minutes or so that I played and just show you all the weirdness that I experienced. So just take a deep breath, relax, and step into the new and improved magical world of the Kenegra Show with added Cornish pixie dust. <coughs> I'm getting ready for 
me to tackle a fucking brilliant journey into Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on PS1. To start with, I hope you know the basic premise of Harry Potter 1, because if you don't, this intro book shows you the origins of the boy who lived, decently enough, but without explaining why he's called the boy who lived, what a muggle is, what Hogwarts is, what Gryffindor or Slytherin house is, and then it cuts straight to Harry standing in the Great Hall. I'm left totally fucking stunned and even I know the story. We are then introduced to Dumbledore, who... <laughs> Holy shit! Good fucking god, man! What did they do to you? You look like a sloth! And of course, he goes on a rant very similar to the book and film where he talks about how great Hogwarts is, but then immediately follows that up with a warning you'll die horribly if you go to a certain corridor on the third floor. The perfect welcome for an 11-year-old boy mentally abused by his step-parents for his entire life living under the fucking stairs. My favourite part about this, though, is that after his speech, if you immediately talk to him again, he forgets everything he mentioned about the third floor and tells you how great the place is to explore. Hoggy, watty, Hogwarts. Oh, wonderful place to explore. Explore. By the way, don't die! So let's go for a run. Well, I say run, more like trying to not let everyone know that you just wet yourself. And we go to the top of the hall where the only unlocked room is and walk straight through the Griffin door. Ha! I can see Fred and George Weasley down there, so let's go and see the... <laughs> Oh god no, not you guys too. First Dumble Sloth and now you both. You look like you're both eating your own lips. You know when a cartoon character eats something really sour? That's there. And now I'm basically becoming their bitch because without Bertie Bot's every flavor beans, they won't tell me the password to get behind one of the talking portraits for some useful equipment. Great. First I'm told I could die if I explore too far and then I'm being ripped off. I thought this was magical lovely Hogwarts, not Peckham. I also think it's weird how they won't give me the information I need unless I feed them earwax flavored yellow beans. That's absolutely vile and I would make some kind of sexual thrill joke, but I think those faces do all the talking for me. I head off through the only other unlocked bloody door in the whole school and then- oh. ah! My God! Are we not addressing that? Is, is the ghost gone? What was that about? Not since the dog in the window of Resident Evil 1 have I been caught that off guard. Hey Harry, remember me? Ron Weasley. No, nope, because as far as this game is concerned, we have just fucking met you, Ron. Also, you look like a dead old lady. And after we've met this wrong Weasley over here, we go and see Draco Malfoy. Oh, come on now, is every single fucking model gonna be this warped? Malfoy here looks like Bobby Hill, and yes, that ruins every single scene of the movie, if you imagine that. Give it here, Malfoy. No, I could be contagious. Go home to your mother, Potter. Oh, sorry, you don't have one, do you? Well, you know what, Malfoy? My mum may be dead, but at least my leg isn't a fish. Now, you may be wondering. <laughs> wondering. Especially after that epic burn from Malfoy about Harry's own mother, why he hasn't said a single word in the game yet. And I don't have an answer to that, so you'll just have to keep wondering it. Us Gryffindors should stick together. Well, that doesn't surprise me, because it looks like every member of Gryffindor's been stuck on your face. We then learn our first spell, Flippendo, from the ghost of nearly headless Nick, no less. <laughs> yep, nice to see you. Enjoy walking away. Way there. And if that isn't the most casual, don't give a fuck one flick I've ever seen, I don't know what is. We avoid these shitting snails, I think, and then we come face to face with the most confusing thing in the game, an instruction book. You can use your L2 and R2 buttons to rotate the game camera. Now is that the book talking, Harry talking to himself, the frog in the back, or the fucking painting? I don't know, but it's out of place either way. And after this we find Neville Longbottom. My good fucking Christ, what is with these models? Neville looks like fucking Susan Boyle. And that's just one side of me. I have a sneaky suspicion as well that they're using the same voice actor for everybody. Keep pressing forwards on the controller. You need to know the password. Walk through the floating clocks to start the timer. Now I'm trapped by these enchanted books. Apart from Harry though, when he finally talks later on, he sounds like a five-year-old. Please keep the common room tidy. And Dumble Sloth sounds like a fake Irish bartender. I am Albus Dumbledore, your headmaster. And Harry may run around like he doesn't want people to think he's pissed himself, but Neville takes the cake of embarrassment because he clearly wants everyone to know he completely shat his pants and is very proud of it. Off to save Harry's Al Hedwig stuck in a cage. How sad, but I think I'd be a little bit more sad if Hedwig Hedwig didn't look like a flying tampon. A charge for pendo nut bridgings might free Hedwig from those bars. Well, I would if your stupid low poly hand wasn't in the way, Saint. We save the owl, go through a passage, and Harry is so happy about everything that he decides to launch himself right off this ledge and break his legs. And despite everything that's happened so far, and every student either bullying him or forcing him to do things like go to broomstick practice when he's barely taken a breath, he still hasn't said anything within the actual gameplay yet. What's wrong with this boy? You know, aside from everything. Like I said, we're now heading for broomstick practice. Shit happens really fast on your first day at Hogwarts, apparently. And before we can blink, we've learned how to levitate our broom somehow, and then see Madame Hooch, who looks like she's been slapped in the face with a spade. She shouts at us for about five seconds, explaining what we'll have to be doing next, and throws us straight into the deep end on a flying broomstick going through rings. Stop! Game! Stop! Slow the fuck down. If you think that I'm speeding this up for the sake of the pace of a silly video, 
I'm not. The game and the story of it really does unfold this quickly and this erratically. It feels like an absurdist comedy. I feel like I'm watching a Monty Python parody of Harry Potter. There's no structure or point and everything that's happened so far has had no time to sink in. And I'm loving it. It's a riot. But I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing right now. Does any of this stuff actually unfold this quickly in the book? Well, there's only one person we can ask for that. Hello boys and girls and welcome to story time with Daddy Caddy now. Since the last time we had a lovely little story, I got myself some new implants in my ass so that I can sit more comfortably. And I hope you children are sitting comfortably. Because if you aren't, I'll, I'll hurt you. Have you ever heard of Chinese burns? Well, I'll tear your arms off anyway. And um, we're going to be reading today. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, so let's begin, shall we? <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a little boy. His name was Harold Potter. He was the boy who lived, if you will. Everyone lives at some point, but then everyone also dies. And the boy who lived was no exception. He died. Everybody dies. And if you don't die, I'll make sure that you do. I really need to stop asking him for anything. We then meet Hermione, who compared to everyone else in the game so far looks relatively normal. And as we have just been introduced to her, Ron just turns his dick switch on and acts like a complete fuckhead right in front of her. Have you met Hermione yet? She's a real know-it-all. And a teacher's pet. No, I am not. She's rather annoying, isn't she? Dude, come on now. In the books and the movie, she overhears you saying that kind of thing halfway in the movie and gets so upset that she nearly gets killed by a troll. Kind of skipping the entire relationship, aren't you, game? And I mean, who introduces new friends to people like this? There's being forward and honest about them, and then there's... Hey, Harry, this is Hermione. She's very smart. Also, she touches children! We head into another linear room and it locks directly behind us, leaving Harry alone with a bearded child. I don't like where this is going. We then walk into the other room, see Professor Flitwick and get transported immediately to class. And this is where the first button pressing minigame starts, which is... well... That was good. Excellent. That was good. Excellent. I'm a real wizard. And after this very brief Wingardium Leviosa minigame, we then just dismiss ourselves, I guess. What? And then get a letter from Hagrid asking us to go and see him. I briefly forgot this was a video game and not an acid trip, though, so let's talk a little bit more about it, shall we? Despite what Dumblesloth said to us earlier about exploring the castle, well, you don't really get to do that, as we've discovered. The journey is mostly about heading from one location to the next with all other routes locked away from you, and there are a few things off the beaten path you can do, like getting murdered by axes. <laughs> But it's nothing like what Dumblesloth promises. There's another room off the beaten path as well, with more beans to collect that not only shows off how terrible these controls are, but it also demonstrates how the hitboxes will get you smacked even if you're nowhere near the fucking knight swinging the axe. Well, except for here though, this was definitely my fault. <laughs> Harry then starts to actually read books to himself because I guess he needed these books to read to him, but now he can read himself. Here's a gold star for you. And then we go to read another book and... It wasn't very good. But oh no, we can't go and see Hagrid just yet because Malfoy locked and is blocking the front door to go outside. After we float some hourglasses back on top of these pillars, this for some bizarre reason causes the front door to not only unlock, but also kicks Malfoy so hard in the back of the fucking head he leaves this plane of reality. <coughs> and then a boss battle for the ages happens. You're not leaving this castle until I have revenge. And what he means by this is throwing firecrackers at Harry to slightly sting him. Oh. And we could just walk directly behind him to the open door, but... <laughs> After we throw back the crackers and damage him enough, he then calls his first lackey, Crab. <laughs> and I'm sure you can imagine I'm now terrified. I should be too, because now Malfoy has moved on from crackers to fucking nuclear bombs, Jesus Christ! For such a cramped school with barely any students in it, set in a castle with big stone echoey chambers and rooms everywhere with Dumblesloth not too far away, why nobody comes to help Harry out in this time of apocalypse now is beyond me. You can't tell me nobody hears this shit going on or isn't walking past, this is the fucking main hall. And after beating Malfoy by throwing the things back at him that he originally threw at me and told Crab and Gore to throw at me because I guess he forgot that I could throw them back at him, we are treated to a lovely bit of silent, long and awkward incredible physical comedy.
<laughs> okay then, finally, off to go and see Hagrid and... What in the unholy name of cock is that? This easily takes the reward for worst character model ever put into a video game. I'm dead certain. I don't even feel confident calling him Hagrid. So instead, I'll just change his name to whatever my phone autocorrects it to in my notes. There we go. Hayride. My phone calls him Hayride. That is who you are. Off to another teacher to learn another spell, and these minigames are nice and dandy and everything, but seriously, do you have to stare at me like that the entire time? How do you think you're helping me by doing this? And after we get the incendio spell to catch things on fire, which basically means unlocking another minigame to get doors open or get items, we head back to Hayride, who despite actually needing to protect Harry with his life, decides it's a great idea to send him on a death-defying quest over pits of lava to retrieve rare fire seeds. Come the fuck on, what if Harry died right there and Voldemort became the Dark Lord again? <laughs> we fight a gargoyle and mini-boss here as well, possessed by a strange cloaked figure and no joke the controls are so bad at this point of the game after the boss that Harry somehow leaps directly into the air without going forward despite that being the only way to jump in this game and then landed and grabbed the ground where he just jumped from. I'm sorry guys this is very entertaining and everything but the game really isn't that good all things considered so I don't think I can go on for much longer but I will get the fire seeds for Hayride because I feel like if I don't it it might kill me. Hayride takes us into his home and thanks us for the hard work, and we even get to see Norbert the baby dragon being born. You know, a part that is actually in the last third of the original story just thrown into the first hour of the game, why not? Welcome to my home, Harry. It's small, but still roomier than your cupboard under the stairs, eh? Okay, Hayride, no need to rub it in. I run around a little bit more, find a portrait that looks like that, and then decide I'm fucking done with this game forever. Seriously, what even is that? I can't even think of anything creative to compare it to other than what I made in the toilet this morning. So obviously this game gets to salvage today. It's way too unintentional funny and entertaining to get anything less. But before I do that, I must know, what do Snape and Voldemort look like later on in the game? And if it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Now, I'm, I'm not coming back. That was way too fucking scary, and the video there. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching this video on Harry Potter and the Philosophers. Yeah, not sorcerers, it's Philosophers. You know, the author of the book's English. It's English Philosopher Stone. And special thanks to all these people on the screen right now that have helped support this channel via Patreon. And special, special thanks to the top tier supporters on the site. Omarma2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Chumba Wumba, that's great. <laughs> Cyberpunk Symphony, Star Eye Relance J, Sakari, Binary Code, Tanner Craft, Exopaz, Thomas Olsen, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton-Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B., Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.